Hey guys, I'm Ray. And I'm Jason. And this video is brought to you by RVUpgrades.com. They have a huge selection of RV products online with extremely fast shipping times. They're based right here in the USA, so if you need to call their customer support team, you'll be getting someone in Ohio. They also have over 35,000 five-star reviews online, which is awesome. And they've been around since 2002, which just proves they know their RV game pretty well. So today we will be installing our sea level tank monitoring system that we ordered off of RVUpgrades.com. The ordering process was really easy and we received email updates alerting us of the status of our order and our shipping, which is awesome. So the sea level monitoring system is actually sensor strips that you put on the outside of your tanks and it gives you a more precise reading than in the traditional tank monitoring systems that come with RVs. So this is actually a percentage of one through 100 instead of the typical monitoring systems that give you normally four red dots of empty, one third, two third, and full. So we're very excited about this upgrade because we plan on boondocking a lot more and having a completely accurate reading on our tanks is going to be very helpful. When picking out your sea level system, there's two things that you need to think about, the monitor and the sensors. For our install, we chose the sea level 7094 since it has a gray, black, galley, and freshwater uh, button on the monitor, which matches our tanks. And it does not have a propane sensor since we don't have one installed on our tanks, so we can't get that reading and it does not have the water pump switch since we will be leaving our panel alone and the water pump switch is already there. So that works for us, but uh, you'll need to decide how many tanks you have and whether or not you want to replace your current convenience center panel to see which kind of monitor you get. The next step is to get access to your tanks, which may mean opening your underbelly, or if you're lucky, you may have access to them from one of your storage compartments. For us, it meant we had to open the underbelly and we measured all of our tanks height, uh, which ranged between seven and a half and eight and a half inches. And that allowed us to select the second part of the system, which would be the sensors. So for all of our sensors, we were able to get away with the ES, which is the standard sensor that comes in the RV upgrade store kits. However, you can call and ask for a different sensor setup if you need a different sensor for a maybe a higher or a shorter tank size. All right, to go over some of our planning for this project, we decided that we were going to leave the current convenience center alone and not reuse any of that wiring because if you know we're not the handiest of people so knowing our luck we would have cut the wrong wire that went to something important like maybe the switch to our slides or something so we decided to run new wiring and we already knew the wiring path so it wasn't that difficult we also get to now test our sea level system against our current tank monitoring and uh, that'll be really good for us to see how they stack up and one of the great things is we went with the the current non-smart version i know sea level is planning to come out with a smarter version that allows you to access the tank readings via bluetooth on your phone or they have some versions that communicate over rvc or namia 2K, which are just link computer languages uh, that I would be able to implement into my smart RV system. So I'm super excited about that. And at that time, we would put the smart panel in here and we can actually move this panel outside to where our freshwater uh, convenience center is so that we, when we're filling up our freshwater tanks or flushing our black tanks, we'll be able to press the buttons and see the monitor from there, as well as have it in here, because you can just add two or three monitors to the same system in parallel and they just work. So because we won't be reusing this space, we will be installing our sea level system in this temporary panel that was installed when our battery system was put in. 
Uh, it's still a temporary panel. We do have uh, the parts to finish it out when we get around to it. So let's go get the install started. To start the installation, you will need access to your tanks. For us, this meant dropping our underbelly. To access our freshwater tank, we had to remove some insulation, but for the remaining portion, we were able to roll back the underbelly and keep the insulation in place. We turned off our power, then began our run of two 16 gauge wires, which is what we had for signal and ground from our furthest tank, for us that's the fresh water, past our other tanks and up to the breaker panel inside our RV, which gives us access to a cable channel that runs straight up to the display. We continued the wire run up to the display panel, but added another two 16 gauge wires for power and ground from the breaker panel to the display for power. Then we connected the power cable to our DC distribution, connected the ground wires together and put in a new five amp fuse. All right, we finished pulling all the wires. So now it's time to start cutting and crimping all the wires and sensors together so we can make sure it all works before we permanently uh, apply the adhesive onto the tanks. We connected the wires to the display, turned on our power again, and tested that the display worked. So uh, we just wanted to show you this real quick. If you're not like us and you're mounting your sea level monitor somewhere new, uh, like we're mounting it up here in our temporary panel with our Victron CCGX and battery monitor, uh, one of the nice things is that you can take out your, your larger panel and pop out your current convenience center. And if you're not using this one, uh, you can cut these wires and you can put your sea level monitor right here in its place. So that's a really nice option. If your current convenience center cutout is too large, I know sea level and RV upgrade store also offer a gasket that you can buy that goes there. So you can cover the hole and make it look uh, nice and professional. But since we will be mounting ours in the temporary panel, I'll just snap this right back in and uh, let's continue with wiring those sensors. With the display working, now it's time to install and test the sensors. First, you'll need to program the sensors so they know which tank they are on. They provide a great visual guide and the instructions to follow, and so we just cut off the corresponding tabs at the top. Then we cut the sensor to the proper length for our tank sizes, which in our case was six inches for the freshwater and seven and a half for the others. We then connected the sensors in series to the sensor and ground wires we ran earlier and temporarily taped them to the tank. After we did this to each sensor, we would turn the power on briefly to test that the sensor was working. Once we confirmed all was good with the connections, we cleaned the tanks and lined up a piece of tape at the top to ensure we were putting the permanent side on straight. We did this for each tank and then used a piece of tape to hold the wires to the right of the sensors. If the wires drape over the top, it could affect the tank readings. After one last test to ensure the sensors were all working, we then put the underbelly back on. The last step for us was to cut a hole in our temporary panel for the sea level display and mount it. All right, so the install is completed and overall I would say that it wasn't hard, maybe just a little bit uh, daunting dealing with that huge underbelly piece. That was probably the, the hardest part was just figuring out how to deal with it. I think it was a lot easier uh, the way we did it, which was only remove about half of it and then roll it up and kind of move it out of the way. But it did enable us to keep a lot of the insulation in place where it was. Um, we only had to take out two full pieces. So that was, that was really nice. But 
running the cable and crimping it was fairly easy. I'm very excited for this install though because it enables us to do a couple of things and just kind of take the, the stress off of them. So one is we like to travel with fresh water when we're going from location to location in case we need to stop and use the restroom or wash our hands or just refill our water bottles on travel days. Or maybe we're gonna get stuck at a Walmart overnighting or something. So before we would fill it up and I don't really think I ever trusted this convenience center, uh, even with our fresh water sensors. Uh, so it would say one third, but we didn't know whether we're carrying um, like 10 gallons or 40 gallons or 50 gallons of water. But now with the sea level system, we can tell almost exactly how many gallons we're carrying since it's a 100 gallon tank and the sensor measures between zero and 100. So we have 19 gallons of water roughly in there right now. So that's really good to know. The other thing is uh, for flushing our black tank, we can now tell the exact measurement of waste in our black tank. And if we're flushing it, uh, which we do and we close the valves, it's also just a little bit of a stress reliever to be able to see the actual levels because I don't think our black tank levels have worked since the first week we've had our RV. To touch on the smart RV integration that I was discussing earlier, I'm super excited and watching for them to come out with the four tank model of their RVC or Namiya 2K sensor. They already have sensors that have like uh, two, three tanks uh, with those can bus technologies already so i'm just waiting for the four tank sensor monitor to come out and then that'll enable me to do really cool stuff like feed it into my home assistant uh, which powers my entire smart rv and would allow me to send notifications when certain tank uh, levels reach a threshold so for our instance it would be fresh water and getting below something like 20 gallons and have it send me a message instead of me having to continuously go and check when we're boondocking or have it send me a message when our gray tank gets above 70%. So we know to start being extra conservative. Uh, so those are some of the cool things we'd be able to do once we get that information out of the sea level and into the smart RV system. We'll keep you posted as we use this system a bit more over the next couple of months, but if you're interested in a sea level system or any upgrades for your RV, go check out rvupgrades.com. They really do have a great selection and great prices. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to join our getaway gang. We'll see you next time. Bye guys. Hey guys, I'm Ray. And I'm Jason. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm Ray. Hold on, I was doing something <laughs> weird. All right. Hey guys, I'm Ray. Oh, sorry. <laughs> if we do actually, extraditionally, <laughs> we, we plan to leave this current control plant. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to join our get a go. Mm.